Hello, my dear students. So this is the third of a ten uh, series of lectures in our course, Heat and Mass Transfer. So Unit 3 deals about convection, and included in this topic is, of course, introduction of what convection is, the analysis of convection heat transfer, the evaluation of convection heat transfer coefficient, both for with and without phase change, and lastly, we'll talk about natural convection. So as an introduction, we define what convection is. Uh, relatively, convection is a physical transfer of gases or liquids containing heat energy. Take note that we can often approximate transport in complex flows by assuming that diffusion takes place across streamlines and convection dominates along them. So here, we could refer that convection really refers to any transfer of thermal energy by a motion of a medium. So in typical uh, engineering application, convection is more broadly defined so that it may also refer to transfer of thermal energy from a solid mass to a flu fluid flowing past the mass where clearly conduction is also uh, going on. Say for example, if you have a hot surface, assuming this is a hot surface, and then, um, so you have a cool fluid flowing through this. So if this is a cool fluid, we could say that convection happens, or that we call it as an engineer, engineering convection. So here, if we have hot gases, of course, we know that hot gases are lighter than cool gases and tend to rise. So let's say the warmer air, it tends to rise in the presence of gravity. Now, if temperature gradients are large enough and externally impose fluid velocities small enough, the expansion leads to convective transport driven by heat flow. And we call that as your natural convection. We will say also the force convection is mixing due to an external force, or we use pump or uh, gravity. Okay, so we have here the film concept. So the rate expression for convection was basically suggested by Newton in 1701, commonly called the Newton's Law of Cooling. I don't know if you still remember that form, which takes the same formula as this. It's like Q over A is equal to H delta T, where H here is, of course, the convective heat transfer coefficient. It is sometimes also referred to as a film coefficient. In, since in some strong fluid flow, the temperature changes are confined to the relatively thin film. So the law is in, because sometimes this uh, law of cooling is written as like this. So it is in quotes because uh, it perhaps more correct to think of this expression as an empirical or data fitting definition of H rather than a law. So it will depend, of course, on the geometry of the solid boundaries whether it's rough or smooth, the nature of the fluid fluid in terms of its conductivity, heat capacity, density, etc., and of course, the nature of the flow. Now, here comes now your fluid mechanics, or I think in your momentum, you also um, thought about uh, laminar and turbulent flow. So in this um, lecture, Determining the, the parameter H will often be the bulk of the work, or at least the only hard part in a given convection problem, because you're very familiar with the equation Q is equal to delta T over R. So take note R here is, of course, the resistance due to the film. So the bulk of your work would be sometimes determining how to get the value of your H. Okay, so let's talk about the analysis of convection heat transfer. As we already discussed, convective heat transfer refers to the transport of heat due to the moving fluid. And in engineering sense, it applies to the case of fluid carrying heat away from a solid boundary. In either sense of the term, it is clear that the rate of heat transfer will depend on the character of the fluid flow. Say, for example, if you have here the wall, have here the wall, the resistances. Uh, that is uh, applied here is, so of course, this is the outside uh, 
outside and this is the inside. So you have your outside film, the dirt, the wall, the inside uh, dirt, the inside film, and of course, the uh, temperature gauge and inside. So as we already discussed, convective heat transfer refers to the transport of heat due to moving fluid. And uh, th this fluid is what we call it carries heat away from a solid boundary. So in either sense of the term, it is clear that the rate of heat transfer will depend on the character of the fluid flow. One good example, if I have a, a double pipe heat exchanger, one is carrying hot fluid. Let's say hot fluid is flowing here and uh, cold fluid inside the inner tube on the boundaries of course you would have here uh, assuming and another so for here so uh, if we analyze this boundary it could actually uh, magnified as the resistances that is inside are actually force the film of the hot fluid on this side plus the dirt plus the wall of the pipe and then the uh, inside dirt the inside and the inside film so basically the total R there R uh, if it is in terms of your convection heat transfer, it's HOAO, this one, for the outside film, plus the dirt, the outside dirt is 1 over HTOAO, plus this time the resistance of the wall, that's delta X over K uh, mean area plus the dirt of the inside film which is 1 over HDI AI and lastly the resistance of the inside film which is 1 over HI AI and take note that RT or the total resistance is 1 over UOAO or this could also be 1 over UI AI. Take note that your U is again your overall heat transfer coefficient given in watt meter squared Kelvin. Now the HDO and HDI, this one is actually called your fouling factors. Such that I could come up with an equation 1 over UO is equal to 1 over HO plus 1 over HDO delta X DO over KD log min plus DO over H D I inside diameter plus D O over H I D I. Or if it is in terms of U I, you just change. It's one over U I, one over H I, one over H D I plus delta X D I. K D log min D I H D O D O plus D I over H O D O. Now your question is of course which one would you use? It's either one over U O or one over U I. So this accounts to the choice would be based on the film which has a higher resistance. And how do you know that? Of course, you know that UO or UI 
these are actually 1 over h, or resistance would always be 1 over h. So if I have an HO given, assuming it's 5,000 watt per meter squared Kelvin, and then HI, assuming it's 200 watt per meter squared, or since it is inversely uh, proportional, you would say that the resistance of your outside film would be 1 over 5,000. And your Ri would be 1 over 200. And definitely you would know that this is 2 times 10 negative 4. This one gives you, say, 5 times 10 negative 3. And you would know that this gives a higher resistance. So therefore, you would use Q in terms of your UI uh, resistance because this, the higher the resistance, the, it is well, because you're controlling film. Okay, now let's talk about evaluation of delta T. So assuming that the outer surface of the heat exchanger to be well insulated, so there, there would be no losses of heat uh, outside or into the surroundings, so that any heat transfer occurs between, just between the two fluids. And disregarding any changes in kinetic and potential energy and energy balance on each in the fluid in differential section of the heat exchanger, of course, can be expressed as, uh, say, for example, for a steady state, or if you have a steady state, if this is T1, which is your hot fluid, this is your T2, so this is your in and this is your out. Of course, at any given time, if it is steady state, you know that the delta T is constant. But how about if you have an unsteady state? Assuming, for example, you have this one. So if you try to visualize this, uh, I could have, assuming this is T hot in, T cold in, let me just change that color. So this would be in T cold, this is T hot out, and T cold out, in, in. Okay, of course we know that the, the difference between the two is your delta T1. This one is your delta T2. At any given assuming this is your delta T. Of course, you would know that it's your delta T here, unlike for a steady state, that your delta T is the same or it's constant. In this case, it's not. So you have actually an infinitesimal. Okay, take a look at this. So this one is your mm -hmm. derivative of your T hot. And this is your, the derivative of your cold temperature. So we define your delta T1 to be actually your TH in minus your TC in. TH hot TC in. And your delta T2 to be your TH out minus T cold out. Okay, so in this variation of the fluid temperature, say in a double uh, parallel flow, double pipe heat exchanger, we would say that your DQ is negative M CPH DTH. Okay, M CP of the hot. DT of the hot. It's negative because, of course, if you have a hot uh, fluid, your final temperature would definitely be much lesser than your inner temperature. And let this be equation 1. Same is true with your cold. M CP of the cold DT C. And let this be your equation 2. 
Now, the rate of heat loss from the hot fluid at any section of a heat exchanger is, of course, equal to the rate of the heat gained by the cold fluid in that section because we assume that there would be no other losses. So it would just be, uh, the exchange of heat would just be between the two fluids. The temperature change of the hot fluid is a negative, as I've said, it's a negative quantity. So we, we add a negative sign here and uh, to make the equation one positive. So to make the heat transfer rate Q positive. So solving this equation in terms of this infinitesimal change in temperature for hot and cold fluid would of course give you dth would definitely be equivalent to negative dq over mcp of the hot and same is true with your uh, change in the uh, cooler temperature to be dq mcp of the cold let this be equation three and this one equation four if we take the difference between the two, so this is the derivative of dTH minus TC, it would give you negative dQ times 1 over mCP of the hot plus 1 over mCP of the cold. And assume this is our equation 5. Now the rate of heat transfer in the differential section of the heat exchanger can also be uh, express in terms of your dq in terms of resistance it's u th minus tc times the infinitesimal change in the area and uh, so i mean this is your equation six now if we substitute this equation to equation five Substituting would give me d th minus tc is equal to negative u times th minus tc. So that would be your dq derivative of as times 1 over mcp of the hot plus 1 over mcp of the cold. Let this be, of course, our working equation. And from the first law of thermodynamics, which requires that the rate of heat transfer from the hot fluid be equal to the rate of heat transfer to the cold one. I am re reiterating that there would be no heat losses. So heat gained is equal to heat loss and we could say that your q therefore is mcph d hat in minus out same is true with your cold you have mcp of the cold tc in minus tc out so taking the values of your mcp from here and substitute it to my original equation uh, here, I would yield ln, or if we would say th this is d th minus tc, all over dh minus dc and integrate this is negative u integral from uh, 0 to a of your as this one is of course from your delta t1 to delta t2 right and then Multiply by 1 over mhcph plus 1 over mcp of the cold. Okay, so if you try to substitute that, we get ln of dh out 
minus dc out fall over dh in minus dc in. Take note that this, of course, is your delta t2. This is your delta t1. So that is this. So this is equivalent to, again, negative ua from 0 to a. So I just have 0 to a. This time, from the, the, these two equations, I'll get mcph, which gives you th in minus th out all over q for this plus 1 over ah, t, tc out minus tc in all over q for the mcpc. If I'm to multiply the whole equation with the negative sign so that I would get negative ua times negative th in minus t out plus th out all over q plus negative dc out plus dc in all over q and rearranging I would therefore get Q, bring it to the left hand side of the equation, would give you negative UA. It's DC, uh, DH out, this one, DH out minus DC in. Uh, this is positive, so, so dc out minus dh in minus dc in all over the left hand side, which is ln of dh out minus dc out all over dh in minus dc in or this definitely gives you negative ua it's delta t2 minus delta t1 all over ln delta t2 over delta t1 take note this is what we call your lm td or logarithmic mean temperature difference uh, if you try to take a look, this is negative, you have delta T2. This becomes, this is also equivalent to a positive UA, but this time it's delta T1 minus delta T2 all over LN delta T1 over delta T2. So this is how your LN PD or the log mean temperature difference, which is suitable form of the average temperature difference for use in the analysis of heat exchangers okay so you now have your lmpd now we, we proceed with having a uh, a problem here where we, we could apply uh, the lmtd uh, theory so you have here you're given a double pipe heat exchanger uh, counter flow with a length of five meters, the loop oil is falling, uh, flowing at 200 degrees C in and 165 out. Water is in the uh, inner annuli at uh, 40 degrees. Let us to get what is the temperature between the mass flow rate of the loop oil and what is your Q. Now, if we are to use equation 3.5, since HO value so you are given your HO value, uh, which is lower than your HI, you would know that the outside film has a higher resistance, hence it is our controlling 
fill. So we would other, rather use the equation Q is equal to U O A O delta C log B. And because you know that this would be equivalent to W C T uh, delta T for your sensible heat, which is also equivalent to your W times lambda or your latent heat. Okay, so we know therefore that your U O A O delta T log mean would also be equivalent to your W C T delta T of the water. which is also equivalent to your big WCT delta T of the fluid oil. Okay. And you know that from the given, it's WCT T2 minus the 40 degrees of the water, which is, of course, we know that your T2 is one of the unknown. So if you try to check on its temperature, uh, data. This is for the loop oil coming in at 200 and uh, at 165, going out at 165. Whereas your water comes in 40 degrees C and T2, which is, of course, what we are uh, trying to calculate. So delta T log mean therefore is 165 minus 40 minus 200 minus T2 all over ln of 165 minus 40 over 200 minus T2. That would be our working equation. And we need to plot what are the given. You are given your W, which is 1,000 kilogram per hour. CP, of course, since it's water, it's 4184 joules per kilogram. So let's just plot all the given. So my W is 1,000 kilogram per hour. This is the data for the water. Your CP is 4184 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Your AO. Of course, uh, pi 1.0 times uh, 0.0254 meters and a length of 5 meters, which gives you 0.399 meter squared. Okay, let's use equation 3.3. If we try to use equation 3.3, that's 1 over UO is equal to 1 over HO plus 1 over HDO plus your delta X, DO over K, D log min plus DO over HDI inside diameter plus your DO plus I, DI. Now, if we are to neglect dirt or scaling of the pipe, oh, sorry, dirt or scale, definitely you would know that this would be cancelled out and the inside hurts. So that I am left only with the values 1 over U O. H of course is given 570. So that's 1 over 570 plus what's the delta X? 0 0.049 of course, this is in inches, 2.54 over 100, I'm showing 1 inch, 
all over k is 250. Okay, in copper, that's 250 watt meter Kelvin times D log mean, so 1 minus 0 0.902 CPI all over LN 1 over 0 0.902 plus your DO 1 inch all over CPI is 2270 times 0.9 Okay, and which gives me a value UO equivalent to 444.84. Thus, if I am to use now my equation UOAO delta T log mean is equivalent to your uh, sensible heat, WCP of the water, T2 minus 40. And definitely I would have time to substitute that. UO is 444.84 times AO of 0 0.399. This one. So that's 0 0.399. A delta T log mean of 165 minus 40 minus 200 minus T2 all over LN 165 minus 40 minus 200 minus T2. It's equivalent to WCP, that's 1000 CP of 41. 84 joules per kilogram Kelvin T2 minus 40 times of course you have joules would be that's a second so it's 414 I need to multiply that one hour 2600 solving it you'll get around T2 to be 60.2 degrees Celsius. Now, since I know already T2, I could now compute for my uh, mass flow rate of the loop oil, W. We know sensible heat is equivalent to latent heat. So your WCP delta T of the water is also equivalent to your WCP delta T of Oil. And you have 1,484 joules per kilogram. Your delta T is 60.2 minus 40 is equivalent to your unknown W times 1.16 times 4184 200 minus. Solving for your W, it gives you around 497.5 kilograms per hour. And lastly, you could use your Q to be equivalent to your WCP delta T of the U. And that counts to force the 497 times 1.16 times 4184 200 minus 165. Using that amount, you'll arrive at a Q equivalent to 23.4 degrees below. Okay, so that's how simple it is. Of course, because as I have mentioned uh, earlier, the bulk of work would be definitely finding the value of H. In our problem number one, your HO and your uh, HI are already given. Save your energy later. Okay, 
So we move on to the evaluation of convection heat transfer coefficient. So we have two types. One is evaluation of H without phase chains, both for force and natural convection. So if it is for force convection, you of course, always having a flow rate. If the flow is parallel to heat transfer area, you have to inject now uh, to with mechanics that you have to learn. If it, check if it is laminar, turbulent, or transition. And uh, take note of the continuity equation and our EDV rho over mu or dg over mu or dw over s over mu. Now, if flow is perpendicular to heat transfer, uh, like the figure that I've included it here, wherein you have a bank of tubes, so sometimes fluids comes inside the tubes and the air is actually flowing perpendicular to the flow of the fluid. So it's like if you have a fluid like here, if the fluid comes in, in the bank of tubes and air is flowing uh, outside so you have uh, the flow is perpendicular to the heat transfer area okay let's apply this equation so i think i've given you also the different um, formulas in evaluation of the film heat transfer coefficient this is found appendix a of the uh, module I have here for force convection fluids inside tubes parallel to heat transfer area if it is turbulent flow you have also have uh, you use of course the general equation is your cider tate equation uh, you'd also be dealing with the dimension uh, dimensionless groups of equation you have the Pecklet number, the Fourier, the Briggs, and also nasser prandtl equation. So I think everything in uh, is already there in the appendix, but we will be uh, solving problems just to show you uh, how to use the different equations given in this uh, appendix. Okay, so I think you have. Uh, two types included is one is a force convection, the other one is for natural convection. Okay, so let's have this uh, problem here. We're tasked to evaluate the convective heat transfer coefficient for a fluid flowing inside a 2 inches schedule 40 steel pipe where the fluid is benzene heated from 20 degrees to 50 degrees at a rate of 1000 cubic meter per minute. Assume that the pipe wall is maintained at 80 degrees Celsius. So it has to get the value of H. Okay, so our first solution is of course we identify it's no phase change. So sometimes it's NPC. You you have a force convection and the heat transfer area is parallel. So to start with we evaluate first the type of flow by using your NRE. Of course, you know, NRE is the V rho over mu. V would be your given uh, volumetric flow rate of 1,000 cubic meter per minute divided that wheel area to get your uh, flow rate, which is around 7,698.6 meters per second. Density of benzene from the data, you get that as 863 kilogram per cubic meter. And at T average, you get your uh, viscosity to be 0.55 by using, of course, the uh, given ta uh, table in the handbook. Okay, I'll show you where do we get this value 0.55. So, in the table uh, 3-312, so we have benzene. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry for that. So the benzene is given. Yeah, let me take a look. 
So this is benzene. Your x value is 12.5 and your y value is 10.9. If you try to locate that in figure 3, that's 43. So if it is 10, 12.5, so it is roughly around here. If we, I to, if I am to project a line from 10.5 and 10.9, so that's just way below, of course, the point or the line for 11. So if this is here, and then the temperature uh, is given at 35 degrees centigrade. So 30, this is 30, 35. You just project this up to here and then continue up to the viscosity line and you get around uh, 0.55. So that's, uh, to con this is in centipois and to convert that in Pascal second, just multiply it by 0 0.001. So that's the, uh, our answer there. So you get 5.5 .5 times 10 negative 4 kilogram meter per second. Thus, we're now ready to compute for our NRE. The answer diameter is 2.067. Then, of course, that is in inches, so times 0 0.0254 multiplied by the density of 863 and the V is 7698.2. 86 divided by your viscosity of 5.5, .5, you get that as 0.63 times 10 to the 9. Of course, you know that it is turbulent flow. If it is turbulent flow, you apply the Sider Tate equation given as equation 3.8, and this can also be found in the appendix. So your nasal is equivalent to 0.023 NRE raised to 0.8. Prandtl raised to one third and mu over mu one raised to 0.14. You know, of course, that your nasal is also equivalent to hi di over k and your prandtl is cp mu over k. So from the handbook, we need to find these values. So the thermal conductivity from table 3 313 is around. Benzene thermal conductivity is 0 0.092. I think the one that I adapted is 0 0.0911. So that's 1.73 to uh, convert that to SI. So you get a value 0.1567. For your specific heat, still table 3 183 for benzene. Specific heat in calorie gram degree C benzene here. So this is benzene at a temperature from 6 to 60. And of course, we know that the average temperature is just uh, what then is the average temperature 35. So that's 50 to 7, 50 and 70 divided by 2. So that's at 35. Uh, degree centigrade so plus of students are 6 to 60 so you adapt 0.419 okay so you get that that's your uh, specific heat for the uh, viscosity take note that it's mu over w so this should be taken at the temperature of the wall which is 80 degrees centigrade so again, using the uh, x and y values for your uh, benzene, that's uh, around 10.9 and 12.5. So from 12.5 until here, and then 10.9, so that's the equation. But then this time, it is at 80 degrees centigrade. So it's 
AT, you project the AT here, and then you just lead to the surround point 35. You get the value for your mu at the wall or your viscosity based on the temperature of the wall. So you get that as 3.5. Knowing that, applying uh, the equation for Prandtl with your CP mu over K, CP is given as 1753096 times the mu, which is 5.5 times the negative 4 over K of 1. Uh, 0 0.157602. You arrive at the Prandtl number equivalent to 6.12. Okay. And then knowing that, I could now substitute it to your equation HIDI. The first equation for the nozzle, which is HIDI over K, is equivalent to 0 0.023. So HIDI over K, so this is uh, this equation is actually. The nasal, which is H I D I over K is equivalent to 0 0.023 NRE raised to 0.8, your prandtl raised to one third, and then your mu over mu W raised to 0 0.3. Substituting all the values, you arrive at H I equivalent to 1.5 times 10 to the Sixth. Okay. So that's easy. So uh, I I'd also want to introduce to you some of the dimension test group, which is part or important to convection calculations. Your packet number, which is equivalent to the zero uh CP over K because since it is equivalent to NRE times NPR, your Peclet number NRE is dv rho over mu times Prandtl is cp mu over k. So you just cancel mu. That's why you have dv rho cp over k for your Peclet. Your Fourier number is also given here and your grades number. Later in natural convection, we will be dealing with also one uh, very important dimension this uh, question, which is your Brashoff number. Okay, so we go to the second type of uh, age, which is the evaluation of your heat transfer coefficient due to convection, but this time it is with phase change. And here you are, you are given a vertical condenser with a flowing uh, chlorobenzene vapor and it is being condensed. So you have a liquid chlorobenzene coming out. Uh, we're tested to get the mass flow rate or W of this chlorobenzene. So you also have here, you're given a 3 for each 16 BWG copper, DO and DI are already given with a length of 1.5. Water is flowing to 270 watt per meter squared Kelvin at a T average of 80 degrees. Okay, so for our solution, we have, of course, again, sensible heat of the water is equivalent to the latent heat of the chlorobenzene. So you have here uh, from table 3 179, you get at 1 ATM, latent heat is equivalent to 7 to 7.59. Where is that? So here. So table 3 179 for chlorobenzene, it's 77.59 for your. Uh, heat of vaporization. So you have there were able to get therefore that your lambda is 325 kilojoules per kilogram. 
And uh, again, from table, the physical properties, you get the normal boiling point of chloride benzene to be 132.1 degrees centigrade. This is that value. We have benzene, 132.1 boiling point. So this table 3 does 2. Okay. So knowing those two values, I could now get Therefore, the average delta T, which is, you know that uh, it's 132.1, so you get your delta T log mean to be the summation of your delta T, which is around 52.1 degrees centigrade. Now, we use evaluation of your uh, convective heat transfer coefficient with phase change. Uh, the, the previous problem is we dealt about NPC or no phase change. This time, we have a vertical tube with phase change. Okay. Uh, our equations, working equations, you have here your uh, NRE. Now we assume NRE. NRE to be less than 2,100 so that we could use equation 13 that's 12 of your McCabe, Skid, uh, Smith and Harriet it's H is 0.943 KF cube rho square G lambda all over delta T O L mu of the fluid raised to one fourth and for condensing fluid properties it is always based on TF and this TF is equivalent to your TH or the temperature of the condensing vapor minus three-fourth of the temperature of the condensing vapor minus the temperature of the wall, which is equivalent to three-fourth of your delta T sub O. Okay, so knowing everything by trial and error method, you assume your TW because actually this one is not given. So for you to be able to get the F, because all the fluid properties are based on that. So if you assume Tw to be 100 degrees C, you get the value of your Tf to be 108. And at this temperature, get all the properties of the chlorobenzene, getting uh, the thermal conductivity, your mu, your viscosity, your density, your, of course, G is uh, given at 9.8, your lambda, and then getting your delta T. 132 minus 132.1 and given kanang length, substitute it to this equation. So if we are to substitute that, you get the value of around 884.54. Using the value of H, compute for your UI. This already given HI. You have K D log mean for for the inner tube because it's given a mansion that it is J fourth Birmingham wire gauge copper 16 BWG copper with DO and DI such that you could get the value of around 666.34. Now knowing this you have to check your assumption. How is that? You know that Q is equal to QI. Have you not and there's still no heat losses along the tubes. So you, uh, you substitute UIAI delta T log mean is actually equivalent to HIAI, TH minus TW. Substituting that, you get to calculate the value of TW. From this equation, you are able to get the value of TW equivalent to 92.85, which is, of course, not equivalent to your first assumption that TW is 100 degrees. Now you have to repeat the steps using, uh, using of course, your uh, new value for, for uh, the wall temperature. So you could also uh, use W lambda is UIA, I delta T log mean to get your 0 0.084. And the second assumption that we had a while back is that the NRE is actually laminar. So getting the W, check your first assumption for W pi D over mu, and you get 
force that it is less than uh, 2100. So, ito yung check. This time, the next step you just have to, to uh, prove is for the assumption for TW. So, you need to repeat. Uh, repeat. So, we for that, repeat steps 1, 2, 3 using the value 92.85. So it's like from a given 92.85 degrees centigrade, you get all the data, substitute it here, you get a value of a new age, a value of ui, and then solve for it. Then you get to check that your assumption is already correct if your new tw assumed is equivalent to your calculated value. Okay, so that's basically a trial and error. Okay, the last is about natural convection. So in here, uh, I think I, uh, I did not uh, include nandun na sa inyong module, but then I opted to solve number two of your learning assessment. Just to show you a different perspective on how to uh, solve problems under natural convection. Okay, so it, this is uh, just an additional to what we already have in the module. Okay, you are given a horizontal cylinder, three centimeter in diameter and 0.8 meter length, which is suspended in water at 20 degrees C. You're tasked to calculate the rate of heat transfer if the cylinder surface is at 55 degrees. Given that, nozzle is equivalent to 0.53 Grashoff times Brundle raised to 1 fourth. And the properties of water at average temperature are given here 990 viscosity, 2.47, the thermal conductivity, and the Cp. Take note that. The general formula for the nasalt, if you have a natural convection, is always given as NU is equivalent to A Grashoff times sorry, A times Grashoff times your front of raised to M. And you have a table. In the handbook, uh, I think it's table. Then this one. Of course, I'm still referring to the sixth edition of the handbook. Okay, I think I have included it here. So for the meantime, this is the general equation. Uh, you are lucky because uh, it's a, the a and the m value is already given to you. But I'll be showing to you. Saan nang galing tong 1 fourth and your 0.53 in this equation. So, okay. Ah, ito na pala yun. Okay. So, you have there the general equation if you have a natural convection. Nasalt is given by this. Your Grashoff and properties would always be based on Tf. And uh, since you have, I think, a liquid here. So we will be using the value for the liquids in computing your B. Okay, rho A and your, so it's already given. Okay, let's start solving. Let's calculate first your Grashoff. Okay, let's do your solution. So your Grashoff number is equivalent to L cubed. Rho squared G B delta T all over mu squared. Your TF, take note. Uh, it was mentioned a while back that the properties would always be based on your TF. So let's get first what our TF is. So TF would be TW plus TB which is given as 55 degrees centigrade and 20. So it's just the average. So that's 0.5 of 
55 plus 20, 35, which is 37 point five figures, or that's roughly 310.57. Okay, and uh, getting the different values, so your density at 20 degrees C is around 998. 0.204 kilogram per cubic meter. Take note, this is from table 3 dash 28. Check nyo na lang. 3 dash 28 properties. Physical properties. And another row at 55 degrees C. That's around 985.696 kilogram per your beta, as I said a while back, since it's liquid, we use row 1 minus row 2 over row average, or row A, delta. And that is 998.204 minus 985.696 all over. The average of the two is roughly 991.95 times 55 minus 20. You get a value of B to be around 3.6 times 10 negative 4 per Kelvin. Your mu, I to get your mu. Two point forty seven, I think. I again from your table of properties, you get two point forty seven kilogram per hour. And so if I multiply this or divide by that is times 1 over 3,600 seconds. So you get a value of 6.861 times 10 negative 4 kilogram meter per second. Substituting these values to your Rashoff number, you finally get NGR to be this time, uh, it was said that for uh, cylinders, instead of the L, you use your D sub O. Or your D O, which is given to now 3 centimeters. So your Grashoff would then be, instead of the L cube, I use your D O cube. Again, so this is D O cube or D cube. So that's your d cube rho squared g beta delta t all over d squared. So you get 0 0.03 times 990 squared times 9.812 for your G. Beta is 3.6 times 10 negative 4. Delta T is 55 minus 20. So that's 35 all over the viscosity 6.861 times 10 negative 4 quantity squared. Uh, this one is sorry for that. It's Q. So, so you get a value 6.95 times 10 to the 6. And then, since you are given that your K is kilocalorie per hour meter degree C, to convert that to what meter degrees centigrade, so I get point. 
kilo kalori. Per hour, meter, degree C. <coughs> Multiplied by 4184 to get that in joules times per hour, I get 2600 seconds, so you get that in va value of 0 0.6206 watt per meter centigrade. And of course, you're given the CP. CP is 1 kilocalorie per kilogram degree C, roughly equivalent to 4184 joules per kilogram degree centigrade. Substituting that to our equation NPR, your frontal number, which is CP mu over K, <coughs> you have 4184, your mu of 6.861, times 10, negative 4, all over 0 0.626. 6, and you get a value of 4.6254. Your nasal therefore, nasal is, from the formula kanina, 0.53 times uh, NPR uh, brush of times your frontal raised to one fourth, you get with 0.53. My brush of is 6.95 times 10 to the 6. My frontal is 4.6254. Everything raised to one fourth, and give it the value of nasal to be 39.91, which is equivalent to your HIDI over K. Substituting, I could now get my HI because it's 39.91 H times DI is 0.6. Ah, uh, initial uh point zero three all over the k of point six zero point six three zero six. So you get the h to be to have a value of thirty nine point eight one times point zero uh zero point six two zero six. So that's thirty nine point ninety one. 0.6206 all over 0.03. Get a value of around 825.60 watt per meter squared degree centigrade. And of course, since you know already your H, I could now compute for my Q because your Q is just basically H A delta T for, for H. Times your area is pi dl. Times your delta t. H is 825.60 times pi. Diameter is 0 0.03. A length of 0 0.8. Times delta t of 35. Finally, we get a value of 2178.71. Okay, going back to the um, formula point uh, for the nasal, which is uh, A times ratio times quando raised to m. Take note that you have <coughs> to get the value y, which is y is actually this, 
simple thing. That's why you get that NASA NASA is actually a y raised to n. If we are to get or evaluate y, so y is actually your Grashof times your Brando. My Grashof is uh, 6.95 times 10 to the 6. So 6.95 times 10 to the 6 times my Brando number, which is 4.6254. I get a value y of 3.2 times 10 to the 7. Getting for that, since your diameter is a horizontal cylinder and my y is in between this value, 10 to the 4th to 10 to the 8th, I could locate the value of a and the value of your m, which is 1 fourth. That's why our equation then takes the form the Nasa is equal to A Y, which is Grashoff at Brando raised to M. From our computation, it's actually 0 0.53 A, so that's your, uh, the value of your A. And M is one point. So it's where we got our given equation. Okay. So that's all for our convection. Thank you very much. I would expect again next Saturday for the submission of uh, the learning assessment for this. Thank you very much. And I'll be uploading again soon, uh, lecture number four. Thank you.